Michigan, and then I had to get down and picked up the trips a couple years back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, no, that, that's what it is a pretty well rounded uh, pack. Pack 12 is pretty well rounded too. Pack 12 is good. I think Kent has the one broadcasting company and the television station, so they have a lot of them. Yeah. That's what the big draw is. They get a lot of them. From their television? I think all the major college football conferences has their own television network. Yes. I know they got the Pac-12 network, the SEC network, Big Ten network. They're Big 12 now. And now, there's some colleges that do like a couple sport, not all of them. And now the Big Ten that push big, big time all of their team, all their schools, the two people, all their team. And everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess now in this day and age, but, and I mean that's one of the bigger college conferences in America. They probably want all sports in it. Oh no, the one the one sport that they are dominant in is wrestling. Yep. We got Minnesota, Iowa. Iowa. Yep, oh, yep, 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 yep. There's just a couple of there's just, just like like, uh, like two other schools that, that really have broken in and got a, a football in their open home. Yeah, that's one of them. Wrestling. Wrestling. Uh, but there was a guy. And I wonder if he was Penn State's Big Ten. And I wonder if it's a guy from Penn State or the guy who never lost a match his whole high school career. He might be the coach of Oklahoma now. That's how he so well. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. He's a great career for 60 hours. Wow. That's something. Ooh, that is something. We had our nephews in us for local wrestling group this year. For this year, the Minot State wrestlers. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And our nephews are really kind of sure their age. So they're just like, you know, wrestling, all the wrestling guys just be standing there like with a kid hanging off each arm and one on his back. And just like, you do, yeah. That's what uh, we had a football team, so it's the same thing. Kids just run around having a good time. One of them, the oldest man, he's interested in football. Football? Yeah. How old is he? 13. So he just, just high school's going around the corner. Yeah, he's gonna, well, he's um, actually going into seventh grade. His okay, age of an eighth grader, he's, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, you're He didn't do yeah, kindergarten yeah, twice. He did a K 1 program. He tells everybody, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Boys, boys, boys get like. Well, everybody says that boys will be boys. Yeah, boys but like, they've been, there's a limit. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been really good. They grew up in a situation where it was very dog eat dog. They had it, so they had to compete for every little bit of attention from their parents. Uh, they weren't really giving them much attention. They were giving any attention. That's not true. Well, that's great. There's people like you guys. I quit talking to her like four months ago, I think, because I found out that... This is really high grade, not in railroad country. It's all continuous rail, double track, on country drive. Uh, very heavily maintained. Coming up the hill, they will also quite often use uh, bumper engines to have heavy freight trains up over the pass. Now uh, we're on occasion that they'll have a railroad car, often a train car, brake and axle or a wheel. And if the fellows attach the car, will dump their grain on the track and occasion to the track. The bears can smell anything miles and miles away, and if they smell great, they know dinner time is being served, and so they'll come flock again. Today, the railroad will immediately put up an electric fence around the train belt and put up air brakes and pop guns, which you would use as a carry orchard to keep the bear out of uh, the cruise way if they clean up the train. In 1985, Maybe 1986 they had a big spill up here, and the railroad decided to bury the grave in the ground instead of hauling it out. Well, they had a little problem. When water trickles into that grave, all of a sudden you have whiskey bags. The bears thought that was marvelous. They were uh, becoming intoxicated, occasionally being hit by the trains coming through. And as a result of that, uh, Baker National Park and the railroad held together and decided that they should take the grain out of the ground, get rid of the whiskey bag, and uh, bring the back, bears back to a sober Look that up on your computer. Check some of the local newspapers. Whitefish, Dallas Bell, what have you. You'll find those articles in the brain. Well, their dad just had um, well, he had a stroke right after he got to like um, just like the jail in Lena, and like, probably about a month in, he told him he didn't feel right. And they were like, "Go bad prisoner," you know. Or whatever. So then when he woke up in the morning, he was here, and they had to bring him to the hospital. They gave him medicine. <laughs> He's fine now. He got—he was he kind of lost the use of his hand, but it's back. And then now he's got an aneurysm. And so they told me like he has an aneurysm. I come home and they tell him I'm like he's got an aneurysm. And he's like, well, of course. Attention, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Essex, Montana, coming up here in about ten minutes. Essex, Montana. So it'll be a quick station stop. In Essex, Montana. And the vessels have been clots up. Oh, okay. If you look at some of these eyes, yeah, it's an optometrist. You'll see it. That flat area down in the valley is called fielding. And that's where quite often in uh, late September, early October, I might pick up a uh, view of 15 up to maybe 100 uh, elk. Fielding at one time housed a number of horses used by the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, to uh, work in the wow. mountain areas and clearing trails. That's crazy. As a young man hiking in some of the Forest Service mountains of uh, the state of Washington, I often encountered uh, U.S. Forest Service work trail crews, and they used a lot of horses to uh, carry their equipment in and their food and camps and what have you. And as a boy, I had the opportunity, starting at the gender age of 14, going up the mountain to mountain with other kids my age, two other guys in particular, uh, using horses. In fact, then, uh, our parents had confidence in us 14-year-olds going by ourselves for three, four, five days. My sister who was a couple of years ago, he was in prison in Michigan. And um, today we he was probably to have our parents go in jail for child abuse. And then he moved he, and then he got his parole <laughs> transferred to Mina in North Dakota. And um, yeah. They've been so much better off. Yeah, they're just 
Well, in that time, when you were sentenced to 8 to 15 yeah. years, I was like... no chance to do more than just protect that train and drive from avalanches. No avalanches.